Old and wise witch of Endor, I received a call from one of your assistants. He said that you wanted to see me urgently. Ah, uh, yes. Mahalia, I see it now. You have a unique connection to the Marine Kingdom. You possess the power to amass wealth simply by captivating men with your charm. What are you saying? I don't want to exploit anyone or their wealth. That's not who I am. <laughs> Oh, my dear, you misunderstand. You wouldn't need to do anything except spend a single night with these men. Their wealth, their happiness, everything they hold dear, will vanish and become yours. They'll even empty their bank accounts willingly, all for you. No, that's not right. It's not fair. I won't be a part of something so malicious. But think of what it could mean for you, my dear. Desperate times may come, and money can solve so many problems. Consider it an insurance policy, just in case you find yourself in dire need. I suppose, if I were ever in a desperate situation, if there were no other options, then maybe, just maybe, I would consider it. No matter how difficult the situation, do not compromise on your values. Psalm 55, 22 encourages us to cast all of our burdens upon the Lord. Psalm 55, 22 KJV says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. 1 Corinthians 10.13 KJV says, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Mark 5.36 ESV says, But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Excellent. We have an understanding then. Rest assured, the necessary rituals will be performed to ensure you are prepared, should the need arise. The power of the marine spirits will be at your command. The witch extends her hand, and Mahalia hesitantly takes it, sealing their evil plans. I hope I never have to go down this dark path. I pray that my own strength will be enough to overcome any hardships. The spirits are patient, my dear. They will wait for the perfect moment to strike. Remember, power comes at a price. Kuba's ex and current lovers started experiencing mysterious and devastating circumstances. Some were better than at home, were fighting for their lives in hospital beds. Others were in states of madness and a few had started losing their most cherished possessions. Kuba, tormented by these stories, got into a state of deep depression. Why are all these bad things happening to my women and all at once? Is it possible that I am cursed? Let me call Sally and Layla and find out how they're doing. Maybe I can see one of them later today. Hey Layla babe, it's Dr. Koba here. I was wondering if we could meet at your place later today. No, Dr. Koba. Our taxi just got into a serious car accident. My children and I are seriously ill, and the doctor says he can't find anything wrong with us. He says our illness may be caused by something spiritual. You know that I don't believe all of that stuff. I am currently going through a lot and I don't know what to do anymore. Do you have a few hundred dollars to send me? I could really use your help. I am planning to visit a specialist doctor tomorrow morning. You may deny it but these kids are your kids as well. The DNA tests were tampered with. You just have to look at my boys to see that they look like you. They're also very smart like you. He disconnected the call. She's always asking me for money, and she's always trying to get me to accept her illegitimate kids as my own. No man. Layla is also going through a lot. Could Mahalia be behind all of this? No man, she could never stoop so low as to use evil means to try and get back at all of my girlfriends and lovers. 
I must see one of my women or go out with the boys tonight otherwise, I will be forced to stay at home and listen to Mahalia's nagging. I better call Sally even though things didn't end well the last time we met. I was wrong to expect her to be faithful to me yet I have a wife and numerous girlfriends. Hi Koba, I cannot talk now. I am at a sacred place seeking a solution to my problems. I can't discuss anything else now. I had to rush somewhere to try and find a solution. Please don't call me again today. I need to focus on what I am doing. I need to be present in this place and not rush things because I want to meet you. Everything will be fine my dear. Just do as I say. If you give in to my demands, I promise you that all of these bad things will stop. However, you'll need to join our secret society and abide by the rules for the rest of your life. The day you decide to leave, all the evil will return. What nonsense. I thought this was a church instead it's a cult. How dare you try and make me live in fear of you and your society. I am not perfect, I am going through a lot right now which may be the consequences of my sins but I will not join a cult and get into bondage. No madam. Leave me alone you perverse man. What's happening? Why is everyone around me suffering? Is this my fault? The evil orchestrated by Mahalia and the witch seems to be working. We will provide you with a prayer that you can use as a guide to pray for yourself and for other people in a similar situation. It is important to seek forgiveness, repent and obey the Lord. Maintaining the deliverance, by obeying the Lord Jesus Christ and having a personal relationship with Him, is extremely important. Let us break every chain in the name of Jesus. In the midst of darkness and despair, we must rise above the chaos and find solace in the light of divine intervention. Let us bow our heads and join in a powerful prayer, invoking the name of Jesus to break every chain and bring deliverance to those trapped in the clutches of evil. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this moment of need. We ask for your divine protection and intervention for those who find themselves entangled in the web of darkness. Lord, we declare that the power of evil will be shattered, and every scheme of the enemy will be brought to naught. We quote the powerful verses from your holy word, knowing that your promises are unbreakable and your truth prevails. In the name of Jesus, we declare, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17 the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27, 1. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. We declare and affirm that the chains of darkness are broken, and the power of evil is defeated. We speak words of encouragement and empowerment to those who may be facing similar circumstances. I am strong, resilient, and covered by the grace of God. I walk in divine protection and victory in every area of my life. I reject all forms of darkness and claim the abundant life that God has promised me. My mind is renewed, and my spirit is uplifted by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let us hold fast to the belief that God's light shines even in the darkest of times. As we unite our hearts and minds in prayer, we break every chain and declare deliverance for those in need. In the name of Jesus, we overcome, we triumph, and we emerge as vessels of His love and grace. Beloved, as we continue our journey in faith, it is important to understand that God's promises are indeed powerful, but they are applicable to those who choose to be his children and walk in obedience. We have a role to play in maintaining our deliverance and experiencing the fullness of his blessings. It is not solely up to us, nor is it solely up to God, but a beautiful partnership between our surrender and his grace. When we are delivered from the clutches of darkness, it is a miraculous and transformative experience. 
However, it is crucial that we remain vigilant and steadfast in our commitment to follow Jesus wholeheartedly and surrender all aspects of our lives to him. For if we neglect this, we may find ourselves susceptible to backsliding or even encountering worse trials and spiritual battles. To maintain our deliverance and walk in the fullness of God's blessings, we must immerse ourselves in his word and live out its teachings. We must cultivate a lifestyle of prayer, seeking his guidance and strength daily. For it is through this intimate communion with our Heavenly Father that we are strengthened and equipped to resist the schemes of the enemy. Scripture reminds us of our responsibility to remain steadfast and vigilant. In James 4, 7, it is written, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It is not enough to receive deliverance. We must actively resist the temptations and traps that the enemy may try to set before us. Additionally, we are called to walk in love and fellowship with fellow believers. In Hebrews 10 24-25, we are encouraged to consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. By surrounding ourselves with a community of believers, we find support, encouragement, and accountability, which further strengthens our spiritual journey. We are able to uplift one another and stand strong together against any spiritual attacks. Beloved, let us remember that our deliverance is not a one-time event, but a continuous process. As we walk in obedience, surrendering all to Jesus, we maintain the blessings and protection of our Heavenly Father. Let us heed the warning of 2 Peter 2.20, which says, For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. These findings about Dr. Kuba are deeply troubling, Minister. It seems he's involved in a multitude of illicit activities. Yes, Mr. President, it's quite unsettling. According to the report, Dr. Koba received substantial sums of money just before horse racing events, suggesting he may be involved in race fixing. That's not all. It says here that he's engaged in affairs with female patients and call girls. His offshore accounts have been frozen, and he's facing investigations for fraud allegations, negligence in administering proper medication, and even adding unknown substances to the drinks of women who rejected him. The list goes on and on. I must commend the Secret Service for doing a sterling job in uncovering the truth. Yes, Mr. President. It's a laundry list of misconduct, indeed. Furthermore, there are records of him soliciting bribes and engaging in shady deals. His association with call cool girls and his wife's highly publicized court case have only further damaged his reputation. This report also mentions that he's been excessively drinking and frequently missing work without a valid reason. This behavior is completely unacceptable, especially for a doctor entrusted with the care of patients. Agreed, Mr. President. Dr. Koba's actions have irreparably tarnished his image and compromised his ability to be trusted with patients. I believe it's time we take decisive action. Indeed, Minister. We must ensure the safety and well-being of the people. Let's convene a hearing where we'll give Dr. Kuba an opportunity to defend himself. However, based on the gravity of these charges and the evidence against him, it's clear that we can no longer allow him to continue practicing medicine. Absolutely, Mr. President. Additionally, we should remove him from all the boards and committees he was appointed to. Such behavior is incompatible with any position of trust and responsibility. This young man had such a bright future. Once the medical board takes away his license to practice medicine, he will be ruined. Perhaps, he can continue working in his private practice where he rarely sees patients instead other doctors send him tissue samples for his team to examine. Yes. He is one of the best specialists in that field in the country. As they say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We will make a decision that is in the best interest of our people. As it is, many healthcare specialists have left our country for greener pastures abroad hence, we must treat this case with the care it deserves. Right. Time passes, and a few days later, the hearing takes place. Dr. Kuba stands before the president, the Minister of Mines and the board members, as the charges against him are summarized and read out.
As the charges against Dr. Kuba are presented, the room fills with anticipation. Everyone expects him to mount the defense, but to their surprise, he admits guilt for most of the charges. However, instead of accepting responsibility, he shifts the blame to his traumatic past. Your Excellency, esteemed board members, I must confess that I am guilty of many of the charges against me. But I implore you to understand the trauma I endured during the liberation struggle as a young boy. I had no permanent home, living abroad in constant uncertainty. The bomb blasts, the sight of countless dead bodies during wartime, these experiences have deeply affected me. Dr. Kuba, we understand the hardships you faced, but we cannot ignore the consequences of your actions. There are others who have faced similar challenges and yet made different choices. Indeed, Dr. Kuba, while we empathize with your past, your actions have serious implications. The trust and well-being of our patients must remain our top priority. The meeting concludes with the board expressing the need for further deliberation to determine the appropriate course of action. The charges against Dr. Kuba are grave, encompassing a range of offenses that have far-reaching consequences. If found guilty, he may face legal repercussions, loss of his medical license, and irreparable damage to his professional reputation. The decisions he made, influenced by his past and personal struggles, have brought him to this critical juncture. Now, the board must weigh the evidence and decide the fate of Dr. Kuba. A few weeks later. Mahalia, we need to talk. Something terrible has happened. I got fired from the hospital and they relieved me of all my board duties. The financial situation is in turmoil. I don't know what to do. Oh no, Koba, I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you serious? How did this happen? The hospital has been facing budget cuts and restructuring, and unfortunately, my position was one of the ones they decided to cut. I'll still have my private practice, but it won't be enough to maintain our current lifestyle. Well, we'll figure this out together. We can downsize if we have to, but there's no way I'm losing this home. We've worked so hard for it, and it's where we've built our life. I know how much this home means to you, Mahalia, but we might not have a choice. Our expenses are high, and without my job at the hospital and the board duties, it'll be tough to keep up. Koba, I refuse to accept that. You might not see it, but I have several tricks up my sleeve. You married a very smart and powerful woman, remember? I'll find a way to maintain our lifestyle and keep this home. You don't need to worry about it. I don't doubt your intelligence or strength, Mahalia, but I don't understand what you mean. You don't work, and you don't run a business. How can you possibly handle this situation? That's where you're underestimating me, my love. I may not have a conventional job, but I have skills and connections that can be incredibly valuable. I have plans in motion that will help us through this rough patch. Just trust me and let me take care of things. I want to trust you, Mahalia, but I'm worried. This is a challenging time for both of us, and I don't want to see you burdened with all of this. We're in this together, Koba. We've faced tough times before, and we'll get through this too. I promise you, we won't lose our home or our lifestyle. Let me handle the details while you focus on your private practice. All right, I trust you. But please keep me informed about what you're doing. I don't want any secrets between us. As if you don't keep secrets and secret lovers from me. Of course, Koba, we'll communicate every step of the way. Together, we can overcome anything. You'll see, things will turn around. Mahalia, I've been thinking. I want to try something different to improve our financial situation. I've decided to travel to remote hospitals outside the city to offer my services there. I believe it could bring in more money for us. Oh, Koba, that's a great idea. You're so talented, and I'm sure your skills will be in high demand there. If it helps us get through these tough times, I'm all for it. Is anything the matter? You're behaving strangely. No, nothing is wrong, my love. I'm glad you're supportive, Mahalia. I thought you might be upset with me spending more time away from home. 
Koba, we're a team. We'll face these challenges together. Besides, it might do you good to have some time away from the city hustle. You're right. Maybe this will bring us even closer. I just hope I can make enough money to ease our financial burden. Don't worry about that. Just focus on doing what you do best. The money will come. Well, I better start packing. I'll be leaving tomorrow morning. Take care of yourself out there and don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Kuba finishes packing and leaves for his first assignment. Over the next few days, he becomes engrossed in his work, putting in long hours at the remote hospital. A few days later, Kuba is on the phone with Mahalia, who seems unusually distracted. Hey, Mahalia, how are you doing? Shush. Oh, I'm fine, Koba. Just caught up with some house chores. How's everything going there? It's challenging, but I'm managing. Listen, I wanted to ask you something. Lately, you seem less possessive of me being away. I thought you might be worried or lonely, but you've been so encouraging. Why is that? Well, Koba, I trust you. And I know you're doing this for us. I don't want to hold you back from your dreams. You're amazing, Mahalia. Your support means the world to me. I have to go now, Koba. Take care, and call me later, okay? All right, talk to you later. Could Mahalia be cheating on me? Why did she cut the phone all of a sudden? Who is in the house with her? I am sure I heard someone breathing heavily beside her. I can cheat on her but I can't stand the thought of my wife cheating on me. No, never. Mahalia cannot do that to me. Kuba's friends visiting him at home after he returns from one of his trips. Kuba, you wouldn't believe what we saw. What happened? Every time you're away, different expensive cars park outside your house. And when we asked your neighbors, they said they saw some people coming in and out too. Expensive cars, people coming and going. What is this all about? Kuba, do you think Mahalia is up to something? I don't know, but this is strange. She's been acting differently lately too, and I've noticed late night calls she takes in the bathroom, like she doesn't want me to hear. You should talk to her about it. It's better to know what's going on. I wonder what they're discussing over there. Let it not be what I am thinking. I better come up with a plan. Those two men should mind their own business. Mahalia, I need to talk to you about something that's been bothering me. What is it, Koba? My friends told me about these expensive cars parking outside our house whenever I'm away. And they said people have been coming in and out. Do you know anything about this? Koba, I wanted to tell you. I didn't want to worry you while you were away. Tell me, Mahalia, what's going on? I started a small business while you were away. I sell imported wines, I am sure you must have seen the various bottles of wine in the wine cellar. My business has been doing well, and that's why those people are coming. They are my clients. The business? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to burden you further. You were already working so hard to make money, and I saw an opportunity to contribute to. Mahalia, you didn't have to do this alone. We're a team, remember? I know, but I wanted to make a difference too. And I was worried you might think I'm trying to replace your role. I could never think that, Mahalia. I'm proud of you for being resourceful, but I wish you'd shared this with me from the start. I'm sorry, Koba. I should have been more open with you. And about the late night calls. They're related to the business too. I have to coordinate with suppliers sometimes, and the bathroom is the only quiet place in the house. I understand now. Let's promise to be more open and supportive of each other, okay? Agree. And about the cars and people, I'll make sure we communicate better so you won't be in the dark anymore. Another glass of wine, my dear guest. Yes. 
Please, your hospitality is unmatched, Mahalia. I'm delighted you're enjoying your time here. I've been fortunate to meet such influential people like yourself. The pleasure is all mine, Mahalia. You're a fascinating woman, and your company is truly enchanting. Oh, I assure you, I've had my fair share of admirers. But, enough about me. I'm eager to hear more about your ventures and successes. The wealthy guest begins to talk about his business endeavors, and Mahali listens intently, occasionally laughing at his anecdotes. As the conversation goes on, the guest starts to mention his recent financial troubles. It's odd, though, I can't fathom how I've lost so much wealth and possessions in just a matter of days. Everything seemed to vanish without any explanation. Oh, that's dreadful news. I can't imagine what could have caused such misfortune. Inwardly, Mahalia is aware of the true cause, the consequences of her dealings with the Marine Kingdom, but she keeps up the facade. I've consulted experts, but no one seems to have an answer. It's as if the wealth just vanished into thin air. I hope everything turns around for you, my friend. Perhaps, I can assist in some way. Your kindness is appreciated, Mahalia. If anyone can uncover the truth, it's you. Thank you for the delightful evening, Mahalia. I'll be sure to keep in touch. Of course, anytime. Take care, my dear guest. What have I done? How did everything spiral out of control like this? It was supposed to be a means to an end, but I never imagined it would lead to this. The witch doctor's words echo in my mind. Her thoughts drift back to the day she went to see the witch doctor at Ender. Embrace the power of the Marine Kingdom, and you shall gain control over men. Wealth and influence will be yours to command. I'll do whatever it takes to rise above my circumstances. Then, prepare for the consequences of your choices. Once you open that door, there's no going back. I never wanted to hurt anyone, but this force, this possession, it's like I have no control over myself. What have I become? Mahalia is left grappling with the consequences of her actions and the ominous presence that has taken control of her life. A few days later, Kuba enters the house, unannounced, and is shocked to find Mahalia on their matrimonial bed with another man. Mahalia, what is going on here? Koba, I, I can explain. Explain. There's nothing to explain. You're betraying me in our own home. Please, just listen. The man on the bed also gets up, realizing the trouble he's in. Look, man, I didn't know she was married. I'm sorry, okay. Sorry won't cut it. Get out of my house right now. All right, all right, I'm leaving. Better leave before I do or say something we will both regret. Koba, please don't leave me like this. I can't lose you. You should have thought about that before betraying me. Now you'll have to face the consequences. Go. Find a place to stay, but it won't be here. <laughs> Mahalia breaks down into tears as she stumbles out of the house, and Koba slams the door shut behind her. I see you've come back to me, Mahalia. I warned you of the consequences. I don't care about the consequences anymore. I need your help. I want to control Koba's mind so he takes me back, no matter what. Oh, how the desperate turn to dark magic. Very well, I can help you with a powerful enchantment, but it comes with a price. I'll pay any price. Just do it. So be it. But remember, magic demands balance, and you'll have to pay dearly for what you seek. The story takes a dark and dramatic turn as Mahali resorts to using dark magic to control Kuba's mind. The consequences of such actions may have far-reaching effects, 
leading to further complications and conflicts in their lives. Thank you for watching this episode of Shadows of Ambition. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel so that you get notified each time we upload a new video. Watch out for the next episode. Before we go, we would like to leave you with the following verses to ponder on. Jeremiah 2.19 says, Your own wickedness will correct you, and your apostasies will punish you. Know therefore and see that it is evil and bitter for you to abandon the Lord your God, and the fear of me is not in you, declares the Lord God of armies. Proverbs 10.16 says, The wages of the righteous is life, the income of the wicked, punishment. Job 31, 3 KJV says, Is not destruction to the wicked? And a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? 1 Samuel 2, 9 says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. Someone, 1 to 4 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Someone, 5 to 6 says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. 1 Samuel 2, 9 says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. 1 John 3, 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. John 15, 10 says, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.